I assure you, ladies and gentlemen, no matter what the others promise to do, when it comes to the showdown, they won't be there. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the most memorable, culturally relevant, and or influential films of the last five decades. Now you got it. Don't think, just do. <laughs> Come on, Rooster, you got him. Drop down and take the shot. Number 50, Jurassic Park. It's, it's a dinosaur. <laughs> In 1993, Steven Spielberg sent viewers to a magical and dangerous island in Jurassic Park. The movie contains some groundbreaking effects that bring dinosaurs to life. Not only that, Spielberg puts you in situations that feel like a thrill ride. You're completely immersed in tension as a T-Rex attacks a tour group. There are also some chilling sequences such as the raptors hunting the kids, giving audiences engaging set pieces to keep them guessing. The director and the special effects team create nothing short of a one-of-a-kind experience. Along with inspiring a series of spin-offs, this film stands on its own as a sci-fi marvel. Clever girl. Number 49, Oppenheimer. Well, the purpose of this institute is to provide a haven for independent minds. That's you. You are the man for the job. One half of 2023's most celebrated movie meme, Oppenheimer surprised many prognosticators with its almost billion-dollar gross worldwide. At three hours long and without a lot of conventional action, it might not have seemed like an obvious blockbuster. But that's what Christopher Nolan does. He makes great movies that usually make a whole lot of money. This biographical drama about the life of J. Robert Oppenheimer is exactly that. In fact, the AV Club called it Nolan's best movie yet, which if you look at his impressive filmography is no easy feat. It worked. Number 48, Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. The movie that put the cool back into martial arts spectaculars kicked off the millennium in great style. <laughs> Combining gorgeous and stunning action courtesy of acclaimed choreographer Yuan Wu Ping with the revenge-fueled drama of a western and simply wondrous and surreal special effects, Crouching Tiger manages to take the somewhat aging martial arts template and make it even more relevant and entertaining than ever before. <laughs> Featuring huge international stars like Chow Yun-Fat and Michelle Yeoh, and directed with enormous verve by Ang Lee, it's larger than life in all the best ways. Take that, laws of physics. Stop! Stop! Ah! Number 47, Pan's Labyrinth. As with pretty much every Guillermo del Toro movie, Pan's Labyrinth is just as beautiful as it is heavy, provocative, and unsettling. In essence, it's a story about a little girl who wants to prove her worthiness of being a princess, but it's the eclectic characters and subplots throughout that make this a true spectacle. Picture Alice in Wonderland, but R-rated. The themes are so vast in this movie that it really needs to be watched multiple times to fully appreciate it. And its various characters, be it the vicious Captain Videl, the mysterious Fawn, or the nightmarish Pale Man, feel as though they could have movies of their very own. Number 46, The Lion King. One day, Simba, the sun will set on my time here and will rise with you as the new king. And this will all be mine? Everything. Everything the light touches. During the Disney renaissance, the company was riding high on a number of compelling animated projects. The Lion King stands out as one of their finest entries ever. Following the tragic death of his father, Simba learns about life and takes back the throne. Remember who you are. You are my son and the one true king. It includes incredible performances from Jeremy Irons and James Earl Jones. There's also the award-winning soundtrack, with songs from Elton John and Tim Rice. The influential movie went on to inspire a long-running Broadway show and a remake. Combining strong story elements and emotional depth, the animated adventure ranks highly among Disney classics. Number 45, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. 
Mixing science fiction and romance, this Michel Gondry film is a departure for funny man Jim Carrey, whose performance was widely hailed as one of the best of its time. Alongside Kate Winslet, another accomplished thespian taking on a challenging role. You're not a stalker or anything, right? I'm not a stalker. You're the one that talked to me, remember? That is the oldest trick in the stalker book. The movie is a refreshing delight that nabbed the Oscar for Best Original Screenplay. After discovering his former love has deleted him from her memory through a new and advanced procedure, protagonist Joel Barish sets out to do the same. But he soon has second thoughts. You're erasing her from me. You're erasing me from her. As doctors attempt to chase down all memories of Joel's love, we enter the frightened labyrinth of his mind. Oh, this is, this is not bad. Number 44, Schindler's List. Steven Spielberg aspired to shoot this historical drama as if it were a documentary. The result may be the most immersive and horrifying depiction of Nazi Germany ever put to film. You need to convince them you have a trade, something valuable to the war effort. Like what? I'm a musician. What if you don't? Your name goes on the list? Schindler's List demonstrates how black and white cinematography can feel more authentic than color. I think you are drunk. That's power, Amon. That is power. It breaks humanity down to its basic components, allowing us to see the evil in the world that many turned a blind eye to. When color does briefly enter the picture, it provides both a glimmer of hope and a gut punch of guilt. Schindler's List is not only a reminder of the lives lost, but also that one person can make a difference. I threw away so much money. <laughs> you have no idea. If I just generations because of what you did. The film would finally bring Spielberg the Oscar gold for Best Director and Best Picture. Number 43, Hereditary. Listen to me, Steve. I know you don't trust me, and there is nothing I can do about that. But they put a curse on us when we brought Charlie back. We made a pact with something. In case you thought that smart, thought-provoking horror films had gone away since the heyday of classics like The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby, the past decade has shown otherwise. Amazingly, Get Out and Hereditary were both feature film directorial debuts. With Hereditary, Ari Aster shows a directorial mastery beyond his years. He isn't without seasoned talent to work with. Tony Collette is a revelation as Annie Graham, a grieving mother spiraling into madness, and not just of the psychological variety. The fact that Collette wasn't nominated for Best Actress might be the snub of the decade, but Hereditary will persist for generations. I just don't want to put any more stress on my family. I'm not even really sure if they could, could give me that support. Number 42, Top Gun Maverick. You see me now? Come on, let's get it over with. Fight's on! Fans of the first Top Gun from 1986 were beyond excited and nervous when they heard the long-awaited sequel was finally getting made. Excited because it would mean more jets, air action, and of course, more Tom Cruise. Over 30 years later, though, would it be able to capture the excitement and energy of the first one? The answer was a resounding yes. Top Gun Maverick not only had even better in-air action than the first one, but it was a surprisingly thoughtful film about redemption and making the most of the time you still have. This one was a runaway hit with both audiences and critics, raking in over $1.4 billion and earning an Oscar nomination for Best Picture. Thank you for saving my life. That's what my dad would have done. Number 41, The Lord of the Rings, The Return of the King. Completing the iconic trilogy initiated back in 2001, Peter Jackson's opus The Return of the King splits its epically long runtime between Aragorn and his men battling Sauron's army and Frodo's journey to Mount Doom to destroy the One Ring. Look, Mr. Frodo, the doorway. We're almost there. Thanks to these two running plots, we get a heady mix of heavy violence and delicate storytelling that's been called one of cinema's great achievements. By closely mirroring J.R.R. Tolkien's stirring and beloved novel, this movie gives fanboys and fangirls something to shout about. The Academy was equally impressed, awarding the picture a record-tying 11 Oscars. My friends. You bow to no one. Number 40, Black Panther. Okay, is this Wakanda? No, it's Kansas. 
A lot of superhero movies have been released in the 21st century, but only a handful of them were influential enough to be considered for this list. Black Panther was one of those handful. It took the MCU nearly a decade to produce a film with a primarily black cast. Anyone who thought Black Panther wouldn't reach Marvel's usual levels of success couldn't have been more wrong. Not only did Black Panther make over $1 billion, it also earned unprecedented levels of acclaim for the MCU. This extended to the Oscars, where it became the first comic book superhero movie to be nominated for Best Picture. This was sadly Chadwick Boseman's only opportunity to take center stage as T'Challa. Few things last forever, but Wakanda will. Wakanda will no longer watch from the shadows. We cannot. We must not. Number 39, Parasite. <laughs> Using literal staircases, director Pong Jun Ho explores class structure and social and economic disparity in modern day South Korea in this brilliant black comedy thriller. While Parasite satiated the audience's desire for an engaging and surprising story, the film also reached some critical milestones. After premiering at the Cannes Film Festival, it became the first Korean film to win the coveted Palme d'Or. Then, almost a year later, it became the first non-English language film to ever take home the Oscar for Best Picture. <laughs> Number 38, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. I told you to stay low and out of sight. A mix of genres and film styles, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once is an experience that cannot be described, but instead must be seen to truly be appreciated. IndieWire described it as a, quote, orgiastic work of slap-happy genius, and we could not have said it better ourselves. The film was a surprise hit. Beyond the $141 million box office, on a between $14 and $25 million budget, it won seven Academy Awards, including Best Picture, Best Director, Best Actress, and Best Screenplay. In fact, the film seemed to win every accolade everywhere all at once, taking home a whopping 266 awards out of 405 nominations. <laughs> Number 37, The Shawshank Redemption. Do it. I didn't, since you asked. <laughs> you can fit right in. Based on Stephen King's novella, The Shawshank Redemption follows a man as he's carted off to jail for his wife's murder. But rather than being a tale of despair and hopelessness, it's a story of fortitude, friendship, fidelity, and of course, redemption. And that's how it came to pass that on the second to last day of the job, the convict crew that tarred the plate factory roof in the spring of 49 wound up sitting in a row at 10 o'clock in the morning, drinking icy cold bohemian. With Tim Robbins and Morgan Freeman working together to bring this story to life, this Frank Darabont film was not a runaway box office hit, but its positive reviews, eventual popularity, and seven Academy Award nominations ensured its spot in cinema history. Aaron, I'm in here. I guess it comes down to a simple choice, really. Get busy living, you get busy dying. Number 36, Goodfellas. While some may credit Raging Bull as Martin Scorsese's career-defining achievement, we have to give that distinction to Goodfellas. As far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. What's so enthralling about Goodfellas is how it captures both the glamour and depravity that come with being a gangster. You got some nerve standing, Mia. Nobody does that to me. Who the hell do you think you are? Frankie Valley or some oh. kind of big shot? Much like Henry Hill's wife Karen, we know that we should be repulsed by this lifestyle, but a part of us can't help but be attracted to it. Anyway, you know, it reminds me, I need this knife. I'm gonna take this, it's okay? Okay, yeah, I just need it for bring it back, though, you know. Of course, the moment that best sums up the film is Tommy DeVito's funny how confrontation. But I'm funny how? I mean, funny like I'm a clown, I amuse you. I make you laugh. Balancing black comedy and legitimate dread, the scene could turn ugly at the drop of a hat. Just don't go busting my balls, Billy, okay? Hey, Tommy, if I was gonna break your balls, I'd tell you to go home and get your shine box. The same can be said about most of the scenes in this unpredictable roller coaster, keeping the audience on their toes every step of the way. Number 35, Die Hard. Come out to the coast, we'll get together, have a few laughs. 
There were plenty of action movies before Die Hard, but this one had something special. It had a grounded hero played by Bruce Willis who brought humor and pathos to the film. He wasn't indestructible, but he did have an edge to him that gave the genre something fresh. There's also the exceptional work from Alan Rickman as the villain Hans Gruber. I wanted this to be professional, efficient, adult, cooperative, not a lot to ask. Alas, your Mr. Takagi did not see it that way, so he won't be joining us for the rest of his life. Together, these performers head up an exciting standoff at Nakatomi Plaza. You could argue that this film set the new standard for action movies with its mix of entertainment and slick writing. It also solidified Willis as more than just a TV star, setting him up as the next big thing in Hollywood. <laughs> Number 34, The Shining. Come and play with us, Stanley. Delivering his own spin on Stephen King, Stanley Kubrick's adaptation of the novel might be the most dissected film of its kind. The Shining is a culturally resonant release that prompted fan theories about every aspect of the movie. It's also completely terrifying, combining a spooky setting with a compelling breakdown of a hotel caretaker. No charge, dear Mr. Torrance. No charge? Your money's no good here. Jack Nicholson becomes the lead writer in an entertaining performance that lets him really go crazy. With Nicholson and Shelley Duvall's committed work, this unforgettable experience has been scaring people since 1980. Kubrick's vision is nothing short of a horror classic, turning King's plot into a cinematic art piece. Wendy? Stay away! Darling, light of my life. I'm not gonna hurt you. You didn't let me finish my sentence. I said, I'm not gonna hurt you. I'm just gonna bash your brains. Number 33, No Country for Old Men. Picking up on the themes of their previous films, the Coen brothers faithfully adapt this Cormac McCarthy novel. I got under control. When a man finds a mother load of cash after a drug deal goes sour, he becomes the target of a compassionless assassin. We watch as this monosyllabic hitman plows through all that gets in his way as he hunts the money down. With, with you going and I don't have the money, he can't touch me, but I can sure touch him. It's an Academy Award-winning case of cat and mouse, masterfully executed at the hands of the Coen brothers, which they later followed with the also astonishing but quite different Inside Lewin Davis. Number 32, Star Wars Episode V, The Empire Strikes Back. The Force is strong. The son of Skywalker must not become a Jedi. While the first film in George Lucas's Star Wars saga was a fun space adventure, the second is much darker and more emotional. Luke, don't give in to hate. That leads to the dark side. Strong is Vader. Mind what you have learned. Save you again. I will. Considered by many as the strongest of the three original films, Empire is not only a feast for the eyes, with its expensive and extravagant visuals, it's also a timeless story to which we can all relate. Aside from the distant planets, lightsabers, and alien creatures, that is. He told me you killed him. No. I am your father. <laughs> Innovative and creative, this chapter in the life of Luke Skywalker and friends is epic filmmaking at its finest. Number 31, The Social Network. When The Social Network hit theaters, Facebook was still a relatively new phenomenon. Jump 10 years later and it is impossible to imagine the world without this social media platform. Hey Cameron, I'm still a little skeptical that we have enough functionality in the site to really draw the attention and gain the critical mass necessary to get a site like this to run. Together, director David Fincher and writer Aaron Sorkin shape the story of Mark Zuckerberg into a modern Shakespearean drama. You have part of my attention, you have the minimum amount. The rest of my attention is back at the offices of Facebook, where my colleagues and I are doing things that no one in this room, including and especially your clients, are intellectually or creatively capable of doing. The question is whether this is a story of triumph or tragedy. It's hard to say since Facebook's story is far from over. But this film depicts a legendary origin story that was relevant in 2010 and remains very much a part of the zeitgeist all these years later. Drop the the, just Facebook. Expertly crafted, brilliantly written, flawlessly acted, and timely while also being timeless, the social network shows that cinema is still very much alive and well. Welcome to Facebook. 
Number 30, Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. Afternoon delight. I don't know, Ron. That sounds kind of crazy. Sounds like you have mental problems, man. Yeah, you got mental problems, man. Yeah, it really does. Man. Afternoon delight. After leaving Saturday Night Live, Will Ferrell embraced his destiny as a film comedy legend. You could argue that his movie and TV roles were all leading to the perfection and goofiness of Ron Burgundy. As a news anchor in the 1970s, Ferrell's hero is an unfiltered man who loves scotch, his dog Baxter, and speaking his mind. He's just one of many iconic characters that make up Anchorman. This period comedy relishes in silly set pieces such as the news fight, allowing various stars to shine. <laughs> It's one of the greatest comedies of the 2000s, allowing the likes of Paul Rudd and Steve Carell to elevate the hilarious script. Even with a debatable sequel, the original film's hilarity never ceases to amaze us. I'd also like to share with you that we are currently dating, and that she is quite a handful in the bedroom. Uh, well, that's gonna do it for all of us here at 6 o'clock. For the Channel 4 News team, I'm Ron Burgundy. You stay classy, San Diego. Number 29, There Will Be Blood. Brought to us by Paul Thomas Anderson, this drama follows prospector Daniel Plainview as he builds his empire during the Southern California oil boom. If we decide to drill for oil, and if the well begins to produce, I'll give your church a $5,000 signing. 10000 Do you want to find someone else that's going to come up here and drill, Eli? Make the investment and do all the hard work that goes into it? While he's met with many speed bumps along the way, it's watching Daniel Day-Lewis portray the character's descent into greed and madness at the cost of all else that makes it a truly gripping watch. And for another stunningly gripping psychological drama, check out Anderson's 2012 The Master with Joaquin Phoenix. Both the character and Anderson's film are unyielding and ambitious, and both helped win Day-Lewis his second Oscar for Best Actor. I drink your milkshake. I drink it up! Number 28, Mean Girls. You can't wear a tank top two days in a row, and you can only wear your hair in a ponytail once a week. So I guess you pick today. In the mid-2000s, this teen comedy helped to establish a new vocabulary. Tina Fey's script mixes great lines, characters, and a hilarious look at high school. Lindsay Lohan's transfer student falls in with popular girls that transform her personality. Faye uses this concept to subvert your expectations, helping to create one of the best teenage films of the decade. I can't go out. <laughs> I'm sick. Boo, you whore. <sighs> Lohan and the cast come together to deliver some of their greatest performances, with Rachel McAdams stealing the show as Regina George. The movie's mix of both relatable humor and fantasy sequences makes it unforgettable. Number 27, The Blair Witch Project. Okay, okay, we're out of here. We're out of here, I'm leaving. At the end of the 20th century, The Blair Witch Project set out to give the horror genre a much-needed remix. The movie follows three filmmakers as they explore a creepy legend and get lost in the woods. Filmed on a modest budget, the production grounds viewers in the terror of every moment. It all builds up to one of the most horrifying endings in cinematic history. The movie itself arguably influenced a whole host of found footage stories. It also featured some effective viral marketing, playing up the possibility that the plot and characters were real. The unique look and the actor's realistic work make this one of the scariest films ever. And it's all because of me that we're here now. Hungry and cold and hunted. Number 26, Titanic. When the ship docks, I'm getting off with you. This is crazy. <laughs> I know. It doesn't make any sense. It's hard not to talk about the 1990s without mentioning Titanic. James Cameron's historical epic wasn't the first film about the tragedy, but it was the most successful. The movie had a record-breaking release that led to billions at the box office. Blending a fictional romance with a real tragedy, it also gave audiences one of the most famous love stories of the 1990s. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet's work is so compelling that it prompted a long-standing debate about a floating door. It's just gonna take a, a couple of minutes to get the boats organized. 
Along with telling an engaging story, the film was a monumental achievement in special effects. Together with Celine Dion's theme song, the project is one of the most enduring cultural artifacts of its era. The 700 people in the boats had nothing to do but wait. Wait to die. Wait to live. Number 25, Moonlight. I'm sorry. But you gotta be sorry for. While it's linked to an infamous Oscar mix-up, this movie is much more than a trivia answer. The film itself is one of the most beautiful and honest works of the last several decades. Directed by Barry Jenkins, this adaptation follows the life of Chiron at three different ages. The character comes to better understand himself through the help or pain of others. It's an intensely moving drama that covers universal themes of identity, acceptance, and love. Remember the last time I saw you? A long time, try not to remember. Deservedly winning Best Picture, Moonlight represents the power of independent filmmaking. Each performer gives a nuanced portrait of three dimensional characters, with Mahershala Ali being just one standout. I hate her. Hmm. Yeah, I bet you do. I hated my mom too. Number 24, Frozen. So, this is what a party looks like. It's warmer than I thought. If its lasting impact on pop culture was only its soundtrack, Frozen would still be a defining release. The Disney movie was nothing short of an incredible success. It arguably re-energized the company's animation department and became its own box office juggernaut. I am wonderful. I've always wanted a nose. It's so cute. It's like a little baby unicorn. But hey, whoa! Oh. Idina Menzel and Kristen Bell lead up a cast of acting and singing talents. Josh Gad also shows up as Olaf the Snowman, giving this warm-hearted tale a few much-needed laughs. Menzel steals the show as the Ice Queen and Let It Go singer Elsa. Let it go, let it go, that perfect girl is gone. Whether or not you love the film all these years later, it still remains one of Disney's most notable projects of this century. Number 23, Mad Max Fury Road. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! In 2015, we aren't sure how many moviegoers were even aware of the first Mad Max movie, released back in 1979. Regardless of whether or not you've seen that one or the two sequels that followed in the 1980s, Mad Max Fury Road is well worth your while. We could get into the film's narrative, but the whole post-apocalyptic story is secondary to the action. The film puts all its eggs in one basket. The basket being the chase through the desert landscape which comprises the vast majority of the movie. It is a bold move, and it pays off big time. The energy is palpable, and the stunts, 90% of which were done practically, are incredible. At least that way, you know, we might be able to... together. Come across some kind of redemption. Number 22, Avengers Endgame. You disgust me. But that doesn't mean you're useless. In Avengers Infinity War, Thanos destroyed half of all life in the universe. In Avengers Endgame, the good guys team up again to reverse his actions. They're both great movies, but when it came to selecting one for our list, it had to be Endgame. Technically, Spider-Man Far From Home was the final film in Phase 3 of the MCU, but Endgame was truly the climax that Marvel had been building to. And to paraphrase Fifth Harmony, it was worth it. Even with the first-rate special effects and larger-than-life action, the film never loses the characters and honors our emotional connection to them. Avengers! Assemble. Number 21, Get Out. Do they know I'm... Do they know I'm black? No. Should they? Today, we all know that Jordan Peele is one of the great psychological horror filmmakers working in Hollywood. But back in 2017, very few of us would have guessed that one half of the sketch comedy duo Key and Peele would make one of the best horror films of the 21st century, in a genre where we thought we'd seen it all. It turns out we hadn't. Peele's film is social commentary, satire, and horror. It's a film as funny as it is scary, blending the two in ways that make for an experience unlike any other. By the way, I, I would have voted for Obama for a third term if I could. Best president in my lifetime, hands down. 
Number 20. Inception It'd be impossible to list the best movies of the century without talking about Inception. You're waiting for a train. A train that will take you far away. It stars Leonardo DiCaprio as Dom Cobb, an expert dream thief who is tasked with the difficult goal of planting an idea in a target's mind and having it grow as if it were their own. Those were not normal projections. They've been trained for God's sake. You're right. How could he be trained? Fishers had an extractor teach his subconscious to defend itself. With its star-studded cast, incredible set pieces, and electrifying action all built on the foundation of a brilliant concept, it is yet another example of Christopher Nolan's mastery. This was our neighborhood. Places from our past. That was their first apartment. And look at that building right there. After Ma became pregnant, that became our home. Much like Nolan's Interstellar, it is a story as emotional, personal, and intimate as it is a science fiction tour de force. Number 19, The Godfather Part 2. Was it a boy? Mikey, after three and a half months. Now, can't you give me a straight answer anymore? Was it a boy? Nobody could have expected a sequel to a Best Picture winner to be this good. Not only does The Godfather Part II measure up to its predecessor, it finds a way to expand upon the story in a near-perfect way. Michael Corleone takes control as he investigates an attempt on his life and expands his business. I know it was you, Fredo. You broke my heart. You broke my heart. While the family Don becomes suspicious of his own crew, Corleone finds himself making the ultimate sin by the devastating conclusion. Al Pacino gives a transcendent performance in the lead role, while Robert De Niro wows in flashbacks as young Vito. The timeline shifts, enthralling story, and talented cast add up to another defining film for Francis Ford Coppola's career. Number 18, Alien. This movie might be the quintessential sci-fi horror movie. At the very least, it features one of the most terrifying monsters in cinema. Ripley and the gang fight to survive against a xenomorph that keeps them guessing. Along the way, director Ridley Scott delivers an atmospheric experience that keeps you anxious the whole time. Everything from the production design to the creature effects raised the bar for future entries in the genre. Many films have tried to capture the shocking and creepy moments of Alien, but few can compare to the originality of the first one. A series of sequels and prequels have attempted to expand upon this iconic movie with varying degrees of success. <laughs> Number 17, Apocalypse Now. I love the smell of napalm in the morning. With cinema legends like Martin Sheen, Robert Duvall, and Marlon Brando in the lead roles, Apocalypse Now crackles with scene after scene of horrifically and masterfully executed death and destruction. Based on Joseph Conrad's 1899 novella Heart of Darkness, Francis Ford Coppola's gritty, Oscar-nominated war epic moves the action of the novella from the Belgian Congo to Vietnam in the 60s. The story follows a group of soldiers tasked with assassinating a rogue colonel, but the result is less a journey about the horrors faced during wartime and more about the shadows of the soul. Horror has a face, and you must make a friend of horror. Horror and moral terror by your friends. Number 16, Brokeback Mountain. I wish I knew how to quit you. From Philip Seymour Hoffman's all-encompassing performance in Capote to Viggo Mortensen's understated yet intense work in David Cronenberg's A History of Violence, 2005 gave us some of the century's finest performances. And you won't find a better pair of performances than in Brokeback Mountain, a love story that many believe should have won Best Picture. Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal are spellbinding as two sheep herders who fall in love at a time when queerness was considered taboo. Brokeback Mountain serves as a safe haven where they can express their love, but these two will never have the life they want together. As heartbreaking as Ang Lee's film is, it remains one of modern cinema's most beautiful romances and a landmark for LGBTQIA representation in mainstream media. Yeah, I swear. Number 15, The Big Lebowski. What can I do for you, sir? 
Uh, well, sir, it's uh, this rug I have. It really tied the room together. As one of the best cult comedies, The Big Lebowski is endlessly entertaining. The Coen brothers craft a twisty narrative filled with colorful characters. At the center of it all, Jeff Bridges breathes life into the slacker warrior known as The Dude. His compelling investigation is hilarious, quotable, and completely strange. We believe in nothing, Lebowski, nothing. And tomorrow we come back and we cut off your Johnson. <laughs> Excuse me? I said we cut off your judge! He has friends like Walter and Donnie, making scenes at bowling alleys some of the funniest ever. Every part of this unique film feels lived in and absolutely unforgettable. It's no wonder it's developed its own following, even compelling fans to create a festival celebrating the movie's greatness. I'm sorry I wasn't listening. <laughs> Ow! Number 14, E.T. the Extraterrestrial. Creating many legendary films, Steven Spielberg once again finds a way to excite us and make us cry. E.T. is much more than a story about a boy and an alien. Through his unlikely friendship with the extraterrestrial, Elliot learns much more about life than anybody could have imagined. It's a heartbreaking tale that tugs at your emotions and makes you believe in something. with John Williams' score. The movie soars in imaginative scenes such as the climactic flight. Few kids' movies can capture the child in all of us quite like this one. Spielberg pulls at the heartstrings in the best way possible, creating one of his greatest triumphs. Number 13, Halloween. In the late 1970s, John Carpenter's Halloween helped usher in a sea of change for horror films. The scary movie helped revitalize the genre and shaped it for the next few decades. Carpenter's vision started a long-running franchise, pitting everyday people against the terrifying Michael Myers. <laughs> Spooky character still ranks among the most indelible villains in cinematic history. With the director's keen eye behind the camera, he assembled a team that included a young Jamie Lee Curtis in her breakthrough role. He even wrote the legendary soundtrack that still haunts us to this day. It might not be the first slasher ever, but it definitely influenced the subgenre going forward. Number 12. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. If you will not show us the Grail, we shall take your castle by force. You don't frighten us, English pig dogs. Go and boil your bottom, sons of a silly person. After conquering television screens, this British comedy troupe set their sights on cinematic glory. Their film, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, takes a much different look at the legend of King Arthur. Everyone from John Cleese to Terry Gilliam plays a variety of roles that combine absurd comedy and an anachronistic tone. Is your quest to seek the Holy Grail? What is the capital of Assyria? I don't know that! The comedians aren't afraid to break the fourth wall, enter dark territory, and even defy all logic with their incredible and funny script. The movie still lives on through cultural references and the ongoing legacy of Monty Python. It's hard to imagine the cinematic comedy world without this release, reminding us all of the multi-purpose uses for coconuts. They're nervous, sir. Then we best leave them here and carry on on foot. Dismount! Number 11, Toy Story. I could have stopped him. Buzz, I would love to see you try. At the forefront of computer animation, Pixar started making features in the 1990s with Toy Story. It was a revolutionary creation that pushed technology even further. The studio also assembled an all-star cast, with Tom Hanks and Tim Allen taking the leads. You are a child's plaything! You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. <laughs> 
Their characters clash as Hanks' cowboy Woody worries about being replaced by Buzz Lightyear. Their adventure features plenty of comedy for all ages, but it also contains action-packed moments and a great soundtrack. The film's tremendous critical and commercial success inspired a series of follow-ups. For kids growing up in the 1990s, this movie represents the start of a lifetime friendship with these toys. What are you trying to pull? Nothing! <laughs> oh, that is disgusting. Number 10, Back to the Future. Ah, what did I tell you? 88 miles per hour! Few films captured the spirit of 1985 quite like Back to the Future. The movie features a defining performance from Michael J. Fox, who took a big leap onto the big screen after establishing himself on Family Ties. It also features the music of the 1980s hitmakers Huey Lewis and the News. The movie perfectly blends the best of the 1980s with nostalgia for the 1950s. John is Marvin, your cousin Marvin Barry. You know that new sound you're looking for? Well, listen to this. Its time-bending plot inspired two sequels and set a high bar for future storytellers. Few movies can be this entertaining, funny, and even romantic all in one bundle. They don't make blockbusters quite like this anymore, giving audiences endless time-traveling thrills. I have to tell you about the future! Number 9. The Breakfast Club Now, I may not have caught you in the act this time, but you can bet I will. <coughs> you make book on that, Missy. Many of John Hughes's films define a generation of young people, with the ability to nail down the human details within coming-of-age stories. The Breakfast Club is no different, as it assembles five personalities for a life-changing day of detention. As an all-star ensemble, the actors give career-defining performances playing disparate people that learn to connect with each other. Andrew, you've got to be number one. I won't tolerate any losers in this family. To this day, this movie serves as an outlet for people to discover themselves or reminisce about their formative years. The poster alone has become symbolic of Hughes's influence on the 1980s and American pop culture. Sincerely yours, The Breakfast Club. Don't, 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 don't. Number eight, Rocky. Brings you here tonight. Mr. Jurgens, the post is wrong. What do you mean? Well, I'm wearing white pants with a red stripe. It wasn't his first movie, but Rocky was Sylvester Stallone's ticket to the big show. He wrote his own star making turn as a working class guy that becomes a boxer. Rocky Balboa trains falls in love, and learns a lesson about success. It's a feel-good tale that reminds audiences that winning isn't everything, asking viewers to search inside themselves for something more. What are you thinking about when that buzzer sounds for that one? What do you think about when the 15th round when you're coming out? What about Rocky? Standing tall among sports movies, this might be the ultimate underdog story. Balboa is probably Stallone's finest creation and the defining work of his long career. He is the heart and soul of this movie, providing a humane performance that kickstarted a popular series. Number 7. Do the Right Thing Down! Oh! Oh! Left hand hate KO by love. I love, I love. As sharp as ever, Do the Right Thing captures race relations in America better than most any film ever has. Spike Lee's masterpiece explores a tense summer heat in Brooklyn. The director plays a delivery guy, Mookie, that's caught between the loyalties of his boss and his neighborhood. If he don't behave, I don't want him in here anymore. He's out. I can't do nothing with him, Sal. You talk some brother talk to him. Brother talk? Bitter disputes build up to violence and police brutality that feels lifted out of today's headlines. Lee's movie has a timeless quality, with his finger on the pulse of issues that continue to persist in American society. The acting, writing, and intense drama strikes a chord in one of the most important movies of the 1980s. Son of a Number 6. Raiders of the Lost Ark <laughs> After 
a successful 1970s, Steven Spielberg started off the 1980s strong with this adventure classic. He took Harrison Ford and made him even more of a movie star than he already was. Ford commands the screen as Indiana Jones, infusing all of his wit and charm into another iconic role. I'll tell you everything. Yes. I know you will. <laughs> Let her go. Spielberg then surrounds the star with a fantastic cast, a fun plot, and amazing stunts. The latter includes a truck chase that rivals any of the director's other action sequences. From the boulder to the opening of the arc, this movie never fails to keep you on the edge of your seat. It's easy to see why it spawned a franchise and became a beloved staple of 1980s American filmmaking. <laughs> Number 5. The Dark Knight I believe whatever doesn't kill you simply makes you a stranger. Proving that superhero movies don't need to be filled with spandex and cheesy send-off lines, Christopher Nolan's second Batman film redefined the genre and impressed both comic book fans and the general public alike. You'd leave a man's life to chance. Not exactly. Dark, twisted, and deeper than the franchise's previous entry, the story follows the caped crusader as he faces off against the infamous Joker, played by an electric Heath Ledger. You won't kill me out of some misplaced sense of self-righteousness. Though Ledger passed away before the film's release, he was awarded a posthumous Oscar for his work, which helps give Batman's story a gritty and realistic spin. And why do you want to kill me? <laughs> I don't, don't want to kill you. What would I do without you? Number 4. The Matrix What? What the hell? In the year 1999, the Wachowskis helped to revolutionize sci-fi and action movies. They created a world-class and mind-bending concept with The Matrix. The movie is a never-ending roller coaster full of fights and slow motion. It's also full of amazing twists, such as the one that occurs after Neo takes a pill. From learning kung fu to dodging bullets, the movie is filled with wall-to-wall -wall moments that have become fixtures of pop culture. The compelling blockbuster raises the bar for movies on both a technical and storytelling level. Regardless of how you feel about the sequels, the first film is an undeniable classic in every way. I'm gonna enjoy watching you die, Mr. Anderson. <laughs> Number 3. Pulp Fiction Is this film driven by its standout performances? Yes. Is it driven by its extreme violence? Of course. But more than that, Quentin Tarantino's Oscar-winning Pulp Fiction is driven by subtle, articulate, and pop culture-heavy dialogue. Mm -hmm. This is a tasty burger. Vincent. You ever had a big kahuna burger? The non-linear plot follows an interwoven group of colorful characters in intricate detail. With such dark humor, you will laugh in spite of yourself. Go make yourself a drink and I'll be down in two shakes of a lamb's tail. With a soundtrack that perfectly punctuates the mood, and sound bites you'll be quoting for years, Pulp Fiction has everything necessary to make you watch it over and over again. You're the weak, and I am the tyranny of evil men. But I'm trying, Ringo. I'm trying real hard to be the shepherd. Number two, Jaws. <laughs> While the disastrous production did not bode well, Jaws became a certified classic upon release. It's a tense story about a deadly shark directed to perfection by Steven Spielberg. The director's efforts, the esteemed cast, and the amazing score mixed together into one of the best thrillers ever. It also helped to create the formula for the modern blockbuster. It's really a miracle of evolution. All this machine does is swim and eat and make little sharks, and that's all. At the time, the movie was among the most financially successful releases in Hollywood history. The plot also scared plenty of audience members out of the water. It raised the bar for filmmaking in general, along with establishing Spielberg as a generational talent. 
You're gonna need a bigger boat. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Star Wars Episode 4 – A New Hope The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Only a master of evil, God. From the mind of George Lucas, Star Wars was born out of everything from Joseph Campbell's writing to Flash Gordon. The filmmaker combined all of these influences into one of the most successful pieces of entertainment ever. Star Wars takes the hero's journey into space as Luke Skywalker escapes his planet and follows his destiny. You don't believe in the Force, do you? Kid, I've flown from one side of this galaxy to the other. I've seen a lot of strange stuff, but I've never seen anything to make me believe there's one all-powerful force controlling everything." This space opera expanded the limits of special effects thanks to the groundbreaking work of industrial light and magic. Bringing sci-fi fantasies to life, the movie created a franchise, merchandise, video games, and amusement park rides. It is undeniably one of the defining films of its year, decade, and century. Let's get one thing straight. I take orders from just just one person, me. So one day you still alive. Will somebody get this big walking carpet out of my way? Which movie from 2024 should end up on this list? Let us know in the comments below. Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.